What you just saw was the new startup effects for the Lockheed Vega. This startup effect comes as a courtesy from FSFX packages. Um, they produce high quality effect files uh, for various different planes. And um, these startup effects will be part of a package that comes with the newest update, which is the update to version 0.04 of the early access Lockheed Vega 5. In this video I want to talk to you about all the other changes that, uh, that come with this new update. And one you can see straight away, there is two new liveries, one of them shown here. This is the Miral Air Service, uh, a Alaska airline that flew in the 1920s and 30s um, before it was taken over by Star Air Service in 1942. And um, with the Lockheed Vega they uh, flew routes from Nome to Fairbanks, which is about a 520 mile strip. So with the Vega that's about three and a half hours. Um, and yeah, this livery will be included in this next update. One cool little new feature that's implemented now is the walk around panel. If you press shift and three, this window will pop up, which allows you to perform a walk around of your aircraft. All the different points that you need to cross off uh, are listed on the right side. Um, and you can see where each of these positions is on the aircraft or the picture on the left. If you want to check the point, just click on check. So we check the propeller first, hand crank the engine to check for hydrostatic lock. Propeller blades appear to be in good shape. So under each of these points, uh, there, is, um, there might be a couple of different things that you need to, need to pay attention to. Um, in this case, there's two points that are being checked. One is whether or not your, your uh, the blades of the propeller are actually airworthy, and the other one is um, that you check uh, that there's no oil um, uh, blocking up the uh, bottom cylinders of your radial, because that could lead to catastrophic failure of your engine. Uh, please be aware, however, that since the malfunction module is not finished yet, um, many of the points that you check here are actually don't have any effect just yet. So um, this is more or less a preview as to what's to come. So you will need to, uh, to perform this check. Uh, you crank the engine a couple of rounds and to, to, to get some oil lubricating the bearings and also to check for this hydrostatic lock. Next one is check engine oil and refill if necessary. Oil level okay, it says, but you can also inspect the oil that pops up this little window here. And uh, it will give you, on the left side, it will give you um, the current condition of the oil, including a little sample of what's in the oil tank. So at the moment we have an SAE 30, a mild climate oil, filled in the tank. The tank level is full and uh, oil appears brand new, no metal scavings found. Um, and once again, the uh, metal scavings are not part of the simulation just yet, and that's to come in the near future. What does happen, however, is that the tank uh, will empty out over time, so uh, please check that you have engine oil in your system. If the tank level is not full, the buttons on the right side will become available, and that allows you to refill the uh, oil tank with, uh, with the oil type that you choose. You can also click the help button in order to get some indication as to what oil to use in what conditions. Next part on the walk around is check pitot and static port, remove any blockage. And uh, you can see the pitot cover is attached, you can remove the cover. That was, uh, before this, this was a function that was purely done uh, through our ground crew interface. Now you can do the same thing in your walk around. Pitot seems clogged up, static port uh, looks clogged. So you can try to remove the blockage. I remove the blockage from the P2, blockage of the static port cleared. So now we are clear. We have, um, we should have um, the uh, barometric instruments working. Check left aileron hinges and control cables. 
Um, all these type of points in the walkaround are not implemented yet, so um, they will turn green, but um, there is no malfunction that is, um, that is uh, yeah, linked to these uh, different checks just yet. Check fuel tanks. Uh, so this one will uh, will turn red if the tank is empty, just so that you know that um, that there's uh, yeah, yeah you're blacking a little of fuel. Check rudder hinges. Check elevator hinges. So all these are uh, currently don't have any real effect. Okay, so that was the first panel. Uh, this is the walk around, and then uh, there is another new interface that comes uh, pops up under Shift Six. On popular demand, I implemented uh, modern radios. So this was a little bit of a compromise for me because the radios that sometimes came with the Vega uh, were early radio systems. And that means that they operated in a completely different frequency range than modern radios. Um, they usually operated in the AM spectrum, so uh, around the 500 kilocycle uh, or kilohertz um, range, whereas modern day um, VHF radios operate in much higher uh, frequency ranges. But since in a flight simulator you can't really step back in time very well and you will, you will need to coordinate your takeoff and landing with, uh, with air traffic controllers, I implemented this radio just so that you can communicate with the SIMS ATC. It won't be activated by default since it's not a historical instrument, but um, the instrument and all the artwork will be provided to you so that you can activate it yourself um, and instructions for that will be uh, included in the manual. The implementation of this radio is very basic. Uh, the only thing that you can really do is to type in a frequency, so 119.2 for instance, enter, and uh, the frequency is locked. It detects if a frequency is invalid, 888 error, so um, you can also, if you change your mind, clear. Um, but this is about it, and you can switch it off, of course. Okay, let's jump back into the cockpit. Another issue that popped up um, is concerning the vacuum system. I was made aware that the uh, Venturi is way overpowered in the current version of the Vega, and so I had a, a closer look to old uh, historic manuals and how the systems operated back in the time. And um, one thing that I found was that in the previous version of the Vega, uh, it was wired up that the vacuum selector on the right side of the, of the um, dashboard, this vacuum selector would select the vacuum source for all three of the vacuum uh, instruments, that is the directional gyro, the artificial horizon, and the turn and bank indicator. However, um, it's very likely that um, this vacuum selector only selected the vacuum source for the turn and bank indicator. And the reason is that the, the uh, small Venturi is not powerful enough to operate all three of these instruments. So um, you need a steady uh, laminar airflow in order for it to build up enough pressure just to operate your turn and bank indicator. And so um, I did a lot of uh, changes to the vacuum system uh, to make it more accurate. And you can see that if you open the uh, maintenance tool under vacuum system, you can see the new diagram, how everything is uh, connected together. So the Venturi is only powering, if anything, the turn and bank indicator. And um, the manuals uh, usually state that you should select the Venturi as your default unless you have icing conditions, simply so that you have a backup. So if your vacuum pump fails, then of course your artificial horizon and your directional gyro will be gone. However, your turn and bank indicator should still work provided that you switch your source to a Venturi. Another uh, fix that's implemented is we now have visible tie downs. So there was a little bug in the programming that didn't allow these tie downs to show up. That was known before release. It was just not enough time for me to, um, to find the, the problem and fix it. So as you can see, now we've got tie downs for, uh, for the Vega. Another thing that changed with the system is that um, the way that uh, the aircraft is held on position when uh, either wheel chocks or tie downs are applied, changed slightly. I used the freeze function before, which in my point of view is not ideal. 
uh, I switched over to a, a, a version where I hold the aircraft in place well, using different means. Um, the downside to the new way is that the position is not held 100%. So if you turn on the engine and if you apply a little bit of throttle, but you've got your wheel chocks engaged, you will still creep forward slightly. Uh, and I'm really sorry, I don't have a solution for this right now. I, I wish there was a better way to do this. Um, if anybody knows or has any idea how to implement a good system to hold my aircraft in place, then please let me know and I'll implement it. So all those were quite obvious changes. Um, a little bit less obvious is the new heat exchange module that's implemented in version 0.04. And you can get an idea of what's simulated if you press Shift 9 to bring up the debug panel and go to the last page of it to find a new uh, section that's called heat exchange. The heat exchange module works in a way that every single part of this aircraft is individually simulated. It has its own parameters, um, like its mass, volume, uh, geometry, uh, heat capacity. And so for each individual part, uh, the, its temperature is calculated individually. Uh, through relationships with other parts. So for instance, if you look into the, the menu, you see cylinder head temperature and the cylinder barrel temperature and the crankcase temperature and the valve temperature. So all these different parts form relationships with each other. So as you burn fuel in your combustion chamber, the cylinder head will heat up. And as it heats up, it then passes on part of this heat to the cylinder barrel through uh, through its contact. So the barrel will heat up. The barrel is connected to the crankcase, so the crankcase will heat up. Uh, and so all these different parts are, are connected with each other. And not only that, the uh, medium, uh, like air or oil, is also simulated through, through uh, uh, convection heat. So um, what you see on the bottom here is the different temperature zones uh, that are defined for this aircraft. So we've got a zone outside, which is essentially just the ambient temperature, the, the air that surrounds the aircraft. Then it's, there's an engine front, which is, uh, let me show you, it's the immediate section right in front of the cylinders. So this little area here. The next one is the engine back, which represents everything that's going on behind the baffles and under the cowling. And then uh, I also included a zone cockpit and zone cabin that is for future use where um, once there is a heater installed into the aircraft that you can actually heat up the cockpit and, and cabin. But that's, uh, don't worry about this for now. Uh, that's not implemented just yet. And so as the air passes through these different zones, it takes away uh, heat energy from the various components that are exposed to the air. And it depends on their uh, their geometry and, and their relationship with the air, so how much of the heat actually gets uh, dissipated. And a lot of these things are still not fine-tuned yet, so you might see some oddities uh, when you load up the aircraft for the first time. Uh, don't worry about this too much. Just know that all these things are being simulated in detail, and so it will take a little bit of time until everything is flushed out, until it, it, it actually um, represents reality uh, to the to uh, extent that it uh, should. One system that interacts with the heat exchange already is uh, the starter motor. So uh, heat is not only generated by the combustion in the cylinders, but also when current passes through the coils of your starter motor. And for that matter, also when current passes through the coils of your booster. And when that happens, this uh, electric motor will heat up very, very quickly, which is why you should never activate the, uh, the starter motor for, for a prolonged period of time. You need to give it some time in order to cool down again. And that is something that you have to keep in mind because if the, um, if the coil heat up too much, then it might melt the isolation between the, the individual wires of the coil and that might lead uh, to a short circuit in your starter motor. So keep that in mind next time that you, that you um, crank the engine over. Another system that's uh, currently affected by the seat exchange module is the, uh, the lubrication. So if you go to 
page number six and seven, you see the, um, all the data for the lubrication module. It's changed slightly from the last version, but essentially um, everything is, is pretty much the same. So um, you can select various parts of the engine to see um, the data of the part and its oil represented on the right side here. Um, this actually cost me quite a lot of headache because it took me ages in order to get the pressures uh, calculated accurately. Um, one thing that is a big change as to the previous version is that um, in previous versions I, I uh, had only one cylinder represented in the lubrication module. Now it's all nine of them that are represented here. So and you can cycle through all these different cylinders by uh, keep clicking on the part and it cycles from zero to eight uh, to represent all the either nine cylinders. The same is true for the valves. So if you click on the valves and push rods, you see it cycles from zero to eight to represent the, uh, the temperatures and, and uh, pressures, viscosity of, um, of all the different uh, push rods of the engine. And so uh, the heat exchange module heats up your oil through uh, the means of convection. So um, Heat is exchanged from the um, from your engine, from the various parts of it, the crankshaft where the oil passes through, or uh, the cylinders where the oil gets uh, gets splashed onto the piston from the bottom. So the oil will heat up over time, and that will change its viscosity. And as the viscosity changes, that has an effect on the uh, on the engines uh, or the oil pressure. And um, again, this works in theory. However, it still needs a lot of fine tuning in order to get the, um, the various different variables down to, um, to reality. At the moment, the uh, oil system seems to be a little bit on the overpressured side, uh, mainly because um, there's one essential part missing in the oil system right now, which is a temperature control unit um, that, that helps to, uh, to bring up the oil to a, um, to a working, whatever, 40 to 50 degrees um, early on. At the moment, it takes quite a long time until the oil actually heats up to the, um, to the required level in order to get the viscosity down. And so you will end up with quite a high uh, pressure in your oil system. But yes, um, what you will see is, um, is how the various different parts of this aircraft are being simulated. and. Um, you can expect over the next couple of months that there will be uh, additions to uh, these two systems, uh, the heat exchange as well as the oil uh, and lubrication system. Uh, and these numbers will be tweaked over time to, uh, to represent reality a little bit better. So this is the updates um, that you can expect for version 0.04 that will come out hopefully on Friday the 20th of July. And um, finally, I just want to uh, give some shout out, some thanks uh, to all the people that uh, helped out so far with this project. First off, I want to thank everyone who purchased the uh, early alpha version of this aircraft. You're great, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your support and your trust into Wing 42. I also want to thank uh, the people who provided me with uh, feedback early on um, with this project. And uh, especially I want to thank uh, Yarek and Tailspin45, um, who've been incredible sources of information. If you check out the forum of Wing 42, you will see that um, that they just keep bringing in new information about the engine and, and uh, the operation of this aircraft. And it's just been great just to listen to the, uh, to the conversations that take place there. So thanks guys, and please keep it up. Um, I, I really appreciate your help and your support in this project. Lastly, I want to mention that with this new update, the price of the Lockheed Vega will increase from 25 to 30 euros. So, um, if you purchase the plane before the update, you will still benefit from the cheaper purchasing price. So I highly encourage you doing that. So please head over to wing42.com and get your copy of the Lockheed Vega. Thanks, see you next time.